Hello, I'm Anthony. Today we're going to have a look at how hi hats are implemented in Groove Agent. I think hi hats are the most complicated part of a drum kit, and that's reflected. Groove Agent pretty much agrees with me because there are so many different hi hat sounds in a standard acoustic agent kit. Those nuanced variations are necessary in order to give us any hope at all of approximating the sound of a real drummer. Now, I don't like programming acoustic kits manually. I much prefer to use a professional musician who's played them in, who knows what they're doing. And that's what you get with the acoustic agent styles. We're going to use some of the acoustic agent patterns today to demonstrate some of the complexities of hi-hats and hopefully give you a little bit more understanding of how they work behind the scenes. And we want to have the drum sounding as natural as possible, but obviously they've got to bend to the will of the song. They've had, they have to serve the song. So the more that we understand them, the better chance we've got of doing that. First thing that we're going to do is have a quick run through a standard acoustic agent kit. And I've started off with a very simple one. This is the Studio Kit SE. This comes bundled free with Groove Agent. It's not a GA5 kit. So we're starting off as simple as we can get. And even so, there are a bewildering number of hi-hats to choose from. We have hi-hat foot, hi-hat pedal, hi-hat shank, lots of different kinds of shanks, shank open, shank closed. As we go up through the various pages of the instrument, we keep stumbling across all of these different hi-hats scattered throughout the instrument. Even more confusing, some of them are repeated. That's a hi-hat foot. Well, we have a hi-hat foot over here as well. Are they different? The answer is no, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. But first, I just want to run through very quickly a definition of some of the features of the hi-hat. I don't want to make any presumptions about your understanding of how a hi-hat works. So a very quick explanation. We have two symbols sat on top of each other. If they're closed, they make a hi-hat closed sound. If we open those symbols, we have a hi-hat open sound. Those two symbols are now resonating more freely. Whereas when they come together, they're clamped and they can't resonate. We can have different variants, different varieties of open or closed. I scroll through. Here's a partially open, slightly more open, even more open. And I think on this particular kit, we go up to OP5, open five. In addition to those different grades of openness, you can hit the hi-hat with the tip of your drumstick. Let's find one of those. Tip closed, tip open, or you can hit the hi-hat with the thick part of the stick called the shank. So let's find some shanks. Here's a shank closed and a shank with the, the symbols half open. And somewhere we should find a shank fully open. Here's one. So that's the thick part of the stick hitting the symbols while they're held open. In addition to all of that, with these two different symbols coming closer together or being opened and being hit with different parts of the stick, we also have a foot pedal down at the bottom of the hi-hat, just out of sight on this image. There's a foot pedal. If you stamp down on the foot pedal, you close those symbols. So the foot pedal determines how open or closed the hi-hats are. But it can also act as a sounding tool in its own right. If those symbols are open and you press down on the foot pedal, you're going to clamp the cymbal shut and you're going to make a sound. That's called a chick. So that particular hi-hat has not been struck by a wooden stick. That's the effect of pressing the pedal down and bringing those two cymbals together. In Groove Agent, we've got an additional level of complexity. We have foot and pedal. You need to know what the difference between those instruments is. And unfortunately, it's not defined anywhere. I've just basically used my ears to try to determine what the difference is between them. Let's listen to them first. Pedal. Foot. I think in the pedal case, that's simply the case of the, the foot pressing the pedal down and us getting the pedal sound. Whereas in the foot, it's either being done harder, so there's basically like more action on the cymbals, or maybe the stick's hitting the cymbal as the two um, cymbals come together. There's definitely more complexity to the foot sound than there is to the pedal, which is quite definitively a single chick and there's nothing else going on there. Now there are four different places on this acoustic agent studio kit, the SE version of the studio kit, four different instances of hi-hat foot. Here's one, there's another one down here, and there's another two higher up in the other groups as well. 
What I basically wanted to do was confirm definitively that they're all absolutely identical. So I programmed them into Cubase. I've also made all of the velocities 127, so the sounds are absolutely consistent across the board. So we've got four instances of the foot, then the pedal, then a couple of closed shank and a couple of closed tips. So that you can hear the difference between all of these different sounds. Let's have a quick run through this and we're determining a couple of things. Firstly, we've got four different sounds, foot, pedal, shank closed, tip closed, but also that the identical instances of the named pads, we've got two closed shanks and two closed tips. They're all the same sound. Let's listen to them. subtle but absolutely noticeable. A professional musician is going to make use of all of those different, let's call them articulations for want of a better word, different ways of hitting these cymbals to make different sounds. Now then, that's just one kit. That's the Studio Kit SE. What about all the other various different acoustic agent kits that Steinberg offer? Well, it wouldn't be one of my videos without a spreadsheet, would it? I've got all the various kits labelled across the top. Also in grey, I do own BFD as well, so I'll put that in grey down the side just to show that there's no similarity between different implementations of different products. BFD has a completely different mapping from all of the groove agents, but that's a different conversation. The one place where most instruments are in agreement is this red zone because that's the general MIDI implementation. So generally speaking, all plugins behave themselves in this zone and start going their own way in the outer zones. So the studio kit's here. Here's all the sounds that we're looking at. And all of these various different hi-hats are implemented in the studio kit. But the important point to note is that Groove Agent is very consistent with its naming conventions in its own family of plugins. So if you select a style from one of the simpler kits, these at the left-hand side are the ones that typically come bundled in SE versions. And then even in the full versions, they are the smallest versions of the kits. They're gonna carry across, they're gonna they're gonna translate perfectly happily into the bigger kits all the way up at the top. The full version of the kit is the biggest with you know an absolutely vast number of different varieties to play with. So now we need to start setting in, making a little bit more sense of this bewildering array of choices. I'll share that spreadsheet with my patrons and channel members if you're interested, you like that nerdy stuff. The next thing to have a look at is the fact that not all foot and pedal implementations are the same. In the Simon Phillips kits, for instance, foot and pedal make exactly the same sound. So I'm going to press play now, just having unmuted the Simon Phillips jazz kit. And all of these first eight sounds are identical. Foots and pedals shank and tip. So it is very implementation specific. The difference between pedal and foot is a very blurred and hazy area. They may or may not contain different samples. You know, your ears will tell you the difference. Here's the vintage kit. They do sound different. Here's the foot and here's the pedal. Quite clearly different, but identical within the family. There's the shank. And there's the tip. Okay, that's all pretty dry stuff so far, but I think it's important to get the definitions behind us. Now we want to start having a look at it in a little bit more of a musical context. The one thing we haven't brought in yet is the foot pedal. This is where things get complicated because that foot pedal motion is dependent on controller information. It's not simply a case of pressing a key on the keyboard. You're going to need continuous controller information. You can see we've got a CC laying down here. That's how we're going to implement the use of the foot pedal. And it's a really important feature of a good natural sounding drum kit. So I've got a pattern here from the SE kit called permanently off. I'm going to drag into Cubase one of the main patterns. It's complexity seven. I've set the intensity up to hundred. So all of the volumes are basically going to be normalized. And then I'm going to drag that pattern into Cubase. We're going to have a quick listen to this pattern before we start focusing on the hi-hats. I'm going to change the BPM of the of Cubase to 109, which is the native tempo at which this pattern was played. You hear those hi-hats opening. 
this is what the pedal's doing. Let's just listen to the hi-hats. So when the foot pedal is pressed down, MIDI CC value at 127, it's fully closed. So when you, you press the front of the pedal down to clamp these two symbols together, when we release the foot, when we basically pull the foot back towards zero in MIDI terms, we're gonna open the symbols up. So with these little clusters of CC messages, we're pulling the symbols open. Now how we do that in relation to when we hit them is critically important. So we've got shank hits closed and open, we've got tip closed, we've got pedal sounds that when I click on them, they're so quiet that we can't even hear them. If I hit the key on the keyboard, you can just about hear it, but it's very quiet. All of these different articulations, they're all adding expression to the rhythm. Can you see the natural and dynamic way that these foot pedal presses are happening. This is a human being playing this instrument. I very, very strongly doubt that this has been coded in this way. Somebody somewhere has played in this drum rhythm in exactly this way. And that's why I like to use styles as much out of the box as I possibly can. I'll cut them up and move different bars around, but generally speaking, I'll try to leave the thing alone as much as possible. A little bit later on, I will do some manual editing of the, uh, of the foot controls and we'll dive in a little bit more detail. Before we get there, I want to have a look at a couple more examples of how hi-hat articulations can be expressed. Here we have a pattern from the Simon Phillips Jazz Drums kit. I'm going to drag this one out. So this is Vintage Funky Main Complexity 5. I'll just pull my intensity up to 100 again. Drag that out. And let's have a look at this one. Now this time there's no CC4 data. Let's just have a listen to the pattern before we go any further. Quite clearly open hats and closed hats being played, but no foot information. How can that be? It's because acoustic agent kits are implicitly tied to exclusive groups. Every sound that you can possibly play on the hi-hat is tied together in a choke group behind the scenes. You don't see any of this information. And choke groups or exclusive groups do actually appear in Groove Agent. If you're programming a beat agent kit, you'll basically have access to this stuff. And it means you can play one drum sound and have it ringing and then play another key in the same group and it'll choke off or stop. The first sound from being played. Well, you get that behavior for free in acoustic agent kits. In fact, you actually can't explicitly do anything about it. The grouping is done for you implicitly. I can demonstrate this very easily by playing an open hat, which as you can hear rings for quite a long time. Now I'm going to hit that hat and hit any other hi-hat sound very quickly afterwards and you'll hear the first sound stop. doesn't matter what second sound I press, any second sound on the hi-hat group, they're all implicitly linked together. And this particular jazz pattern is using exactly that feature. We're getting open hits from the shank, so this is the side of the stick, hitting the cymbals while they're held open. That key in Groove Agent, what is it, F3, is specifically programmed to exactly that thing. You don't need to do anything with the foot continuous controller information to get that sound. Then very shortly afterwards, we're getting a pedal sound, which is the chick, chick, and that's choking off or stopping the open ring. So every open hit is being choked off by the pedal. So I left a snare roll in there, sorry about that. So this is a completely different way of implementing pedals. Totally fine. Use the exclusive group nature of Groove Agent. You're going to get the same result. Another example for you, the Mr. SP Mix 01 kit from the Simon Stu This is the Simon Phillips Studio kit, not the Jazz kit. I've chosen the main pattern complexity four. I'm going to drag this into Groove Agent, and this is yet another way of handling foot implementation. Just needed to assign a drum map there. So what we've got here is progressively opening foot pedal controls. This could, this foot pedal business is a continuous range from 127, which is fully closed, 
to zero, which is fully open, slightly counterintuitive because it's kind of opposite to the way that your brain might want to work. It's because 127 is pressing the pedal fully down. When a drummer's basically playing the pedal, they, the, the front of their foot presses the pedal fully down. That's 127. And then zero is off. Let's listen to the rhythm as is before we go any further. You hear those two different two different open foot ranges. So the, the first part of the sound is being played really quite heavily choked. This value here, 107, is the cymbals are almost fully closed and then they're opening slightly on the second hit. If I take away part of it, it sounds much more choked for the entire time. So your degree of flexibility over these foot controller messages is absolutely vast and all of it makes for really interesting variations of the different kinds of sound. We'll come back to those three patterns in a little while. I want to show you some creative uses for actually doing musical things with them. But firstly, I want to have a look at programming some of this stuff manually. I'm just going to duplicate this track so that I can edit it freely. I'm just going to concentrate on these two notes. I have a shank open and a hi-hat pedal. So at the moment, the shank open is being choked by the foot pedal. We're pressing the pedal down, we're going up to 127, pressing it fully down and suppressing it. If I take away all of this information, now it rings. And you can edit this stuff quite freely. To have a lot of control over exactly how that choke works. See, I can basically gradiate that slope completely freeform with just two CC data points. And at any point, if I bring in any other hi-hat sound, it's going to choke it off. But now this sound, the hi-hat pedal sound, is being influenced by this underlying foot pedal data. So the CC data has absolutely no idea about what note's being played. The relationship between the foot pedal and the sounding note is just it unfortunately complicated. It's a difficult thing to implement. This We're, we're attempting to, to model something that's very dynamic, very human, all of these limbs moving simultaneously. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to play this single shank open note with the CC foot value at zero. Now bring it up to maximum. So that's the same note being played on the keyboard. It's uh, A sharp zero. There it is. I'm hitting that key on the keyboard. You can probably hear the sound of the key. That's being affected by the underlying continuous controller information. There's not much you can do about that. That's a that's an that's a hi hat shank open sound that's sounding closed because the CC data. Oops, <laughs> it is now because the underlying CC data is telling it to close. Still pressing A sharp zero here, playing the hi-hat shank open. Even if I play it on Groove Agent, they sound exactly the same because the foot pedal's overriding the default nature of the pad. So just be aware of how important this controller information is to the sound. There's nothing magical about these pads. That's simply a representation of the symbol at any given moment in time. But the CC data is overriding it and saying, no, do this instead. I'm telling you to either open or close the foot pedal. And that's going to have an impact on all of the pads of the drum kit. We can use the CC information in both directions. 
So this is starting with the foot pedal open and it's when the note gets played that we'll be here and then we'll, we'll close it off. Or we can start choked and open the pedal once we've begun to play the note. Just take my snap off. Cubase only cares about what's going on at the moment the note is hit and then subsequently. So this is gonna start out choked and then open. We're gonna get effectively kind of a splash sound. There we go. If I hadn't introduced any of that CC information, we just get the choked sound. So do be aware of how important this CC data is. It does have a fundamental effect on the nature of the sound. Finally, today I'll show you a nice trick of how I use hi-hats in a more creative way when I'm writing music. Now, generally speaking, with your kick drum and your snare drums, effectively any of the lower drum sounds, you need to be very careful about how much of it occupies the frequency range. You know, you have to be quite sparse with that low end stuff. But the hi-hats, you can get really creative. You can layer multiple different patterns on top of each other and you can make them sound really pretty cool. So these three patterns that I effectively randomly dragged out because they were all for the purpose of demonstrating foot articulations. I'm going to try to combine them all together to make an interesting groove. I'm going to start off with the SE rhythm. And in this case, I'm going to use the full kit. So that's the rhythm exactly as it came out of Groove Agent. Now I'm going to go to the Simon Phillips jazz kit and I'm just going to use all of the hi-hat sounds. So I mute everything else, and I'm just gonna bring in that sound that came from the hi-hats. Let's mix that to taste. Okay. Now we're going to use the Simon Phillips Studio Kit uh, groove, and again, mute everything that isn't a hat. Let's bring that in. Now that's competing quite heavily with the Jazz Kit, so let's pan them. And in seconds, got a really cool brand new hi-hat line to play with. It is so easy to be kind of musically creative with hi-hat lines. It's one of the things that I have most fun with when I'm programming drum rhythms because it seems that you can add almost anything together and as long as you're a little bit subtle about your mixing and your panning as I just did there it just instantly sounds really good. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.